This is Resolute 104.4 FM, flipping marvellous. Uh, I'm Nick Hennigan and welcome to another exciting, yay, exciting episode of Literary London, uh, where we talk about things, well, literary and london -y, although not exclusively. Um, and as is our want this time, not only are we uh, on Resonance FM in glorious stereo, if you're listening in stereo, of course, you can see that we're also in vision. Yes. Oh, yes, we're recording this. Uh, it's going to go on the Maverick Theatre Company YouTube channel. Uh, and it'll also be on a brand new uh, uh, website called bohemianbritain.com, which makes me smile slightly. You'll know if you're a regular that um, we were voted, or this show was voted uh, number two in the top 10 bohemian podcasts and radio shows to follow in the world. <laughs> Which made me laugh slightly uh, because, I mean, how, how are you a good bohemian? And is what I'm doing bohemian? Apparently it is, my loves. Number one, by the way, is an American outfit. They're in New York. I'll reach out to them later. Number four is called Soho Bites. They've been in touch as well because they want me to go on their podcast. So it's all happening. Oh, it's all going on. And what's going on at the moment as well, which is really exciting, is an organisation I can't believe I've only just come across, really. It's the Royal Society of Literature. Um, and I'm joined today by Annette Brooke. Hello, Annette. Hello. Hello. And also <laughs> Daljit Nagra. Uh, Hello, hi, Luke. Daljit. Hi, uh, hi Annette. Hi, Annette. So, we're obviously socially distanced, if you're listening on Tut Wireless, we're obviously doing it from our various abodes, which we'll talk about in a minute, because who'd heard of Zoom a year ago? <laughs> uh, but just talk about, let, let, who, who, tell us about the, the Royal Society of Literature, because it's a, a brilliant organisation. I can't believe I didn't know it exists. I'm about to join as a member, but just tell us what it is, the Royal Society of Literature, and what it does. Should we do it together, Annette? I'll yeah, start. Go on. You start. You start. Randomly stop, and you're going to step in. I yeah, because I, I should say you're your chair, aren't you, Nalji? That, that That's right, yeah. So yeah. I'm testing the, my communications manager as I speak as well. So the Royal Society of Literature is a 200-year-old charity um, started by um, King George, I believe. Uh, so a while ago. King George the Fourth. King George the Fourth. <laughs> Yeah, because there's lots of Georges in that time and to come. And there, we, we are here to promote literature, the values of literature. We are here to celebrate and champion and award good literary writing. And we are here to promote literature to, you know, to schools, to Resonance FM, wherever we can in the world. Um, we are an exciting, in many ways, a young organisation. No, I know we're stuffy and old. We have been stuffy and old and exclusive, but we are no longer that. You only have to look at people like Annette and myself to notice. <laughs> Annette, you yeah, I, 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 Annette. you also you look. You're both looking very well because we've got. If you if you're watching this on YouTube, because the, I'm suffering quite badly from a lockdown haircut, and you're both very beautiful. Oh, I, don't, you, I don't know. I think I am. I've got more hair than I, I last this time last year. Let's say that, Nick. Got, um, scissors from Boots the other day. My wife cut my hair. Oh, you're very brave. Very brave. It helps if you've got a brave wife as well. That's pretty good. <laughs> and so when you talk about promoting literature, what does that mean <laughs> realistically? So um, the RSL was set up for the advancement of literature in the United Kingdom. That's our sort of mission, if you like, which um, has changed over the years. So 200 years ago, literature meant a different thing. It was a different thing. Um, uh, it was a sort of guardian of the elite. It was kind of held by the elite, I suppose. Um, we don't define literature. Um, and which makes it quite exciting. So we welcome writers um, of all forms, all types of literature. Um, at the heart of the RSL is its fellowship, of which Dalgit is a fellow. Um, we have about 600 fellows, and this is sort of writers electing writers to a lifetime literary honour, if you like. Um, you get FRSL after your name, um, and we're like the other learned societies, so there's the Royal Society, the Royal Society of Arts, the Royal Geographical Society, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have a royal patron, um, uh, Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cornwall, um, who I know takes a great interest in pleasure in reading. Um, and as Dowdett's outline, we do a number of, we do a great variety of work, which includes um, schools outreach. Um, we do, when schools are open, <laughs> uh, they just are about, aren't they? Um, we do a number of awards and prizes. Uh, we have um, a full events programme. Got an event tomorrow evening actually all of our events are now on zoom currently at the moment so um uh we've got an event um looking at love tomorrow uh so that should be quite fun um 
but yeah, we do, a, we do a variety of work. I'm the communications manager, so I look after the external communications, which is like the website and social media and all sorts. But um, as Dalgit said, it's a young organisation at heart. I think we're 200 years young rather than 200 years old. And yeah. We've got like various initiatives that people can apply for, the Sky Arts Award, which mm. is a one-year mentoring. So if you want to be a non-fiction writer, you'll be mentored by a non-fiction writer or a poet or playwright or a screenwriter or a novelist. So people can apply for that. So you need to go on the Royal Society of Literature website and you can apply it. And this is something set up by Sky Arts and Bernadine Evaristo, who won the Booker, of course, last year and who's uh, been on council and is an important part of our team. So hopefully people want to apply for that. And we have yeah. various other things, don't we? We've got the, um, the um, Sky, uh, sorry, the Writers Across London project mm. with, with, in collaboration with London Museum. So people can go on the website for that, can't they, Annette? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so Sky Arts, um, our, Sky Arts RSL Writers Awards is for emerging writers of colour. So to sort of, Bernadine was particularly keen as, a, as an ambassador of Sky Arts to champion emerging writers of colour. And you will have heard her speak about this a number of times since her book a win. Um, so we're proud with, to be working with her on that. Um, and yeah, like Dalgit said, right across London is really exciting. You're part of that, aren't you, Dalgit? So I collaborate with another author. We indeed. wrote books together and we're yeah. other people to write, aren't we, Annette? So how, how does that work, the Writers Across London scheme? So right, yeah, yeah, Right Across London is um, aimed at sort of, it, it's sort of addressing sort of, co sort of kind of lockdown writing, if you like. So um, writing about COVID, not all depressing, we hope, but encouraging Londoners to sort of put pen to paper. Um, yeah, and sort of share, share their poems with us. Um, we're going to be creating a digital map of poetry from sort of, yeah, hopefully pinpointing different places across London where people can share and they can share their work on that. Um, there are a number of Right Across London ambassadors of which Dalgit is one. And he said he's um, um, in collaboration with another poet. He's writing um, Zoom poetry, I suppose. Poetry yeah. over Zoom, is that? <laughs> yeah, and you say people can submit poems, can't they, Annette? And they'll, they'll, they might be used by the Museum of London on their site, which is, you know, Museum of London by Barbican. I'm sure you Yeah, know. yeah, I mean, it's, it's a fairly significant yeah. You drive under it quite a lot if you go through that way, don't you? Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. It's on the roundabout, isn't it? It's a bit weird. So yeah. They can that, can't they, Annette? And they actually they can, it yeah. So um, all details are on our website, but yeah, all, there's, lots of, there's lots available at the moment for... Lots of, lots of things going on. We're um, also seeking, as I mentioned, the fellowship is at the heart of the RSL. We have um, RSL Open, which is open, if you sort of moment at the moment. We're just looking to um, diversify the fellowship, sort of, you know, um, looking at those underrepresented communities that maybe we're sort of missing in our fellowship um, and inviting public recommendations uh, of writers who might be really great to be made fellows. So, um, yeah, that's... It says, uh, it's, yeah, sorry, Dada. No, just to add, it was really important because you know some writers get missed we've got our council of authors and we may have missed making fellows of people you know because they, they may maybe from working class background they're lgbtqs um you know living outside london those sort of the bame who just have been neglected for whatever reason so we, we, you know since people like annette and myself we've been rsl we've become aware that maybe our group of elected fellows aren't diverse enough and maybe we've missed missed authors so this is a chance for the public to say hold on what about this person i think they're a fantastic author you know whether it be screenwriter playwright poet novelist whatever um i want you to consider this person and we've got a, a kind of like adjudicating panel which is made of a very august names who'll be you know reading through the work and selecting these people I got A plus at our secondary modern school. Ah, just thought I'd throw that in there. Oh yes. So we're talking about the Royal Society of Literature, and it's a, it's a two hundred year old organisation. We kind of get a bit. I mean, obviously, and you're obviously dealing extremely well with with the current climate in the United Kingdom with the lockdown and all the digital events. But go back. So you must have a physical place, and is it is it beautiful and crusty and gothic? It's Somerset House, so yes, it looks that oh, way. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've got an office in Somerset House, so one of the, the cultural residents there, tenants there. Um, uh, sadly, we haven't we've been in the office for, well, for a year now. It's exactly a year, almost to the to the day, um, just last week. Um, it's we've had to adapt. I think everybody has, though, haven't they? I just um, and you, you do your best. You do your best. Yeah, we, we've had a lot of uh, interesting. Uh, I mean. Uh, 
festivals that have been arranged off offline and online and it's interesting how a number of people have said in a sense it's given us an opportunity to expand the base a little bit because we've had no choice with but to reconsider our traditional i mean i suppose perhaps most famous is the edinburgh festival at the moment the uh, which is uh, which is sort of half online half offline and cal aldality wrote uh, is an irish poet who has a great festival in in ireland he was saying it's fantastic because actually now we've been involving people from all around the world because you could do it as we're doing now sort of sitting at home as it were so um so t tell me about the what does the dowage what's your role then so your chair we know that but what are you really come on spill the beans it's a very humble role nick I, i'm just so I, I sort of represent the council and there's about 15 of us on the council we have quarterly meetings about the various projects underway so i chair those meetings and i i deal with the director on a almost a weekly basis and about any new initiatives we want to develop and we're always thinking of broadening um our kind of projects our offers uh, at the moment we're working with the uh, the cultural center barcelona and developing some um, commissioning authors from britain to work around for example just one word have a word and develop an idea around that word like what I, was, I saw one which was just a word poem and some east european writer written some amazing um a set of ideas around poem and it was a film made with with that so it's a kind of beautiful film so we're commissioning british authors to take part in that and we've got various other projects always on the go we're always looking for new things to do to keep ourselves busy um as we promote literature and as yeah we, i mean once you're a fellow we try and get you some work as well you know so you can help in turn to do things nick you'll be doing that for us one day i'm sure <laughs> i will I've got two plays and i got a plus I'm sorry, yeah. i failed me 11 plus so that, but that's gone now the 11 plus day. i'm not i'm not annoyed about that anymore i'm not still hurting mr millward but uh yeah well, so what you're are you a writer uh uh yeah, so, is, that, okay. is that your your background yeah, that is, that's, that's how I came. So I actually did an interview in 2007 when my first book came out uh, with Resonance. I think it's Wendy. Wendy, uh, I can't remember the full name. Wendy, yeah, she's a bit of Goldsmiths. And, yeah, she's brilliant. And so, yeah, I've had four books, all with Favour and Favour. And th that's been, and I present a radio uh, po program called Poetry Extra on Radio 4 Extra every wow. Sunday at five and, and noon, noon and five. So yeah. I'm an extra promo in. It's called yeah, that's allowed. And I repeat the old classic old poetry programmes, whether they're from five years ago or from 40 years ago, whatever's in the BBC archive. Because as you know, obviously BBC poetry programming has been really made in the 1920s, but someone came along and destroyed all the programmes. So the oldest really? one we have from late 1950s or early 1960s, I think the oldest one I've, we've come across is one with Betjeman doing, John Betjeman doing an interview in 1962. Brilliant. I mean, it's a shame that it's not there anymore. Yeah, and uh, we we did quite a lot with Dylan Thomas and uh, being in Futrovia in the London Literary Pub Crawl, which is kind of where this podcast and radio show started originally. Uh, a, a version of uh, that I I wrote and, and directed, and it's been going out since 2012 actually but we also got involved then in a, Dylan Thomas in Fitzrovia which was a festival arranged mainly by Griff Rhys Jones I don't know if you know Griff Rhys Jones the sort of comedian and presenter and Griff Griff has got a place in Fitzrovia as well and it was amazing the amount of uh archive that the BBC had got just with just with Dylan Thomas alone so gets a bit of a bash in the BBC at the moment we won't get political because we're in we're in Perda now with local elections coming up in the UK um but it's a it's a brilliant thing and and what so what books do you write what's your genre as they say yeah, yeah I guess I write but adult poetry which is exploring ideas about um cultural mixing um how we get on with each other um write love poems kind of poems about Britain as a nation state, how we're seen abroad, how we see ourselves, those sort of those sort of issues. And how did you get involved with the RSL originally, with the Royal Society of Literature? I was elected as a fellow, so it's fantastic, a few years ago. I, I don't think I'd heard of them either, Nick, and I just assumed it's some stuffy organisation, you know, anything with the word royal. And to my great surprise, I mean, they were doing really dynamic stuff, and I was invited to go into deprived schools to do workshops. Um, and I've just met, you know, loads of authors and I'm really surprised the amount of work that's going on. Then I was elected onto council and I was involved in some of the projects. So um, it's been a pretty, pretty exciting organisation. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I, I came across the Royal Academy, just the Royal Academy, not the Royal Academy of Art, almost the same. I mean, in the days when you could actually go there and there was, a, and they were, they were, they, they, uh, when I first heard of that, I thought, oh, that sounds a bit stuffy as well. They were 
great. They were out there doing, I mean, all sorts of art, basically. But it was, uh, so it sounds a very similar kind of organisation, you know, in terms of trying to make a difference. And someone else made a point to me that actually a lot of the events that you arrange uh, are, are because you feel they should happen rather than any great commercial uh, pressure. I, I get a lot of, I mean, thankfully, I get lots of stuff from publishers uh, for this show, uh, and I do lots with them. But, but this is kind of cool in that, there isn't any real, doesn't seem to be any real commercial pressure in what you're trying to do. Yeah, and that's a really good, good point. We, we, something, Annette and I haven't actually mentioned, we just pick things that we, we love. So we're going we're gonna to have this new initiative where authors, four authors will talk to each other about their writing process. And they don't have to have had a book out, which is great, isn't it? You know, like festivals, there's always somebody who's got a book out, but it might be somebody who hasn't written something for 10 years, but is working on something. So we're always kind of looking to um, put re authors together who have been writing for you know 30 40 years alongside new authors and yeah it's, it's, it's a kind of it's a love it's a passion we're not here to make money and, and as Annette said we're based in Somerset House it's a place we rent we're not like those you know European institutions arts institutions where they have these like august 19th century offices that are theirs you know so we, we rent and we, we and we, we I think in many ways we punch above our weight to use that sort of horrible metaphor but and um, we've got a small team but we do tons of stuff and we keep people like Annette busy we've got an amazing young team actually our director's quite young Annette's young and the rest of our team are actually young lively enthusiastic people and Annette is a playwright herself so she knows what it's like to be a writer and has a love of writing yeah, Somerset House is quite interesting, isn't it? Because it sounds extremely posh, and it is very posh, but actually they, was it a few years ago, anyway, they kind of let out that's creative, it became a sort of an area for small creative businesses to get a reasonable rent um, in, uh, in, in the centre of London. I, I benefited from the Society of London Theatre, I had desk space in Carnaby Street, which was a similar sort of scheme, so I won a bursary for a play. Um, so uh, this is Residence 104.4 FM, I'm Nick Hennigan, we're talking about the Royal Society of Literature with Daljit Nagra and Annette Brook. Annette is in communications and she's going to communicate in just a mo. Uh, you can of course, as always, if you'd like to get in touch, uh, email's probably the easiest now radio at mavericktheatre.co.uk thanks to those who donated to the resonance fundraiser which i think is now finished uh, but well done for that uh, and you can see and hear this not just on tip wireless uh, but also on the london literary pub crawl Dot com podcast uh, on the Maverick Theatre YouTube page, which is a new initiative, and also on this new uh, BohemianBritain.com, which, which I still can't say without laughing. Uh, so we're everywhere. We're everywhere. So Dolger, are you are you a local boy originally? Yeah, I, I grew up in a place um, near Heathrow Airport, just a couple of miles from there, a place called Usley by West Straton. Yeah. So, and I lived. My parents bought a shop in Sheffield in the eighties. So I lived in Yorkshire for about fifteen years. But back here. But Annette, have you, you've always been here, haven't you? Yep, I'm um, South London born and bred. So, um, South. South. You're always on the college. <laughs> and what, so Annette, you're doing communications, which is great. Is your background uh, uh, kind of PR or is it literature? How did you end up here? It's actually arts, broadly speaking, actually. So before the Royal Society of Literature, I worked at Spread the Word, which is, um, I knew Dalgit then, I didn't, I Dalgit, um, which is um, London's writer development organisation. They do lots of workshops and masterclasses and mentoring and great programmes. So it's kind of, yeah, I was there five years. Great, great organisation. Um, heartily recommend them. Um, and right across London, actually, is one, they're one of the partners. So we have lots of partners at the RSL um, and, and they happen to be one of those. Um, before that, I, a, a variety of arts organisations I worked for, um, including the Arts Council, um, Arts Admin, goodness, I got about, uh, but I have a degree in English from Goldsmiths and a degree in Arts, an MA in Arts Administration. Also. Oh, well, so yeah. I just basically ended up <laughs> doing the thing I should be doing, which is uh, Arts Admin for a literature charity. Um, and what, what, because you write as well then? I do, I do. Yeah. So I, I'm part-time at the RSL, I work four days a week. Um, and on Fridays, allegedly, I am to be found writing um well it's hard in lockdown though i must have to say it's i write for theater and you need to, i need to be out in the world list earwigging um and uh you know listening to i just like listening to people on the, on the sort of nosiness on the bus and so forth i haven't been on a bus this year frankly but anyway no, um, I, yeah <laughs> it's a difficult one isn't it i mean uh, there's one or two people uh, uh simon stevens the playwright you mm. know uh, and uh, there's a few other people have commented on on the fact that uh, yeah, all this free time, but the distraction is not working. You know, it's actually in the background. There's this notion that we can't actually go anywhere or do anything. 
So it's, yeah, it must be it must be difficult. And what got you? What started you writing now? What was it that pushed you over into into the abyss, Annette? <laughs> into the abyss. I used to write poetry, but um, unlike Dalgy, I wasn't particularly good. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and um, I think I entered a competition. I had an idea for a play, and I'd had an idea for ages, but I thought you had to be a certain sort of person to write a play. So, which is, I don't know what my thought that person was, but um, yeah. I entered a competition that Channel Four ran called The Play's The Thing. Um, and I got through to the final 30 out of like 2,000 people. I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> With this. And so I, people kept encouraging me to send my work, this was a long time ago, to the Royal Court, to the Young Writers Programme. And I did and got on that. And I, to be honest, that sort of started me off. I, you know, so yeah, I, I um, yeah. It's a, I, I, I like the, uh, the collaboration of theatre. I like the community, like the handing over to actors, a director, like all that. I love being in a rehearsal room, all of that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yes, I've, I've written a few plays myself, you know, and and produced a few, of course, which is where Edinburgh comes into it. But it's and, and what about your uh, uh, what about yourself, Dalji? What got you into writing? Um, I'm probably, actually funny. I think my story's a bit like that. I, as in, I didn't think I'd be a poet. You have to be a certain type of person, unless you've been exposed to other authors, you've seen them in the flesh. You just assume you have to be from you know a good good edu good background, good education, all that stuff. Um, so I, I, it's just more of a hobby. I just had to write. You know, you've got this imagination, this thing in your body, and you have to communicate with it. And it was just, I just wrote for a hobby, really, for years. And then um, I got one of those free uh, uh, hour session, Ruth Borth, uh, no, not Ruth, Ruth Padel, the poet. Um, I think it's half hour through time out. I just saw it in there and had a session. She said I should publish my poems. I showed her a few poems and she said you should do this. She gave me a little roadmap and I more or less followed that for the next few years. So sometimes, you, and as Nat just said, the, the kind of encouragement is what you need, isn't it? Early on, I got some mentoring and things like that. And I guess in RSL, what in a sense, hearing that story, mine probably is, that's why we're so passionate, I think, is pr encouraging new writing and, in, and celebrating writing and making sure people don't get neglected. I think if, if things like RSL Open, is, it is about looking at underrepresented people. So many people write in oblivion almost and quietly in the corners of the of the towns and the cities and regions of the country and just don't get noticed and sometimes feel they have to shout and that's not fair on them because not everybody wants to shout to be heard. Yeah, it's very interesting, isn't it? I mean, again, I joke slightly about the working class thing, but that's certainly been at Maverick Theatres. I mean, you know, the, as a working class group, it just came from a slightly drunken vision and watching a film one night that we did a version of Shakespeare's Henry V, which has since gone around the world and done quite well. Uh, one person version was not a comedy. And that only came about from a night at the pub. And then when we set up Maverick Theatre, none of us had got a degree. There was none of us knew anything about the arts of yeah. space. I mean, it, it was literally a classic lesson in how to get it wrong. Uh, but uh, now it's quite nice, you know, with a few years behind me to be able to put a little bit back uh, in, in those terms. And that's Maverick's still about access. You know, we're training producers at the moment. Uh, and it, so it's, it's fascinating. Um, and so in a sense, what happens when you become a fellow of the RSL? Because that sounds great. Well, I think we, you know, we all need recognition, don't we, Nick? At some point, um, as, as Annette said, you get this post-nominal, I think it's called, isn't it? Post uh, this title after your name, which is great, isn't it? Uh, FRSL sounds really, you know, like being an optician or something. With those, <laughs> you get that. I think sometimes you just need that boost, don't you? That recognition that you're part of a community who uh, admires you. That there's a council of um, very celebrated authors, experienced authors from a range of different disciplines, and they think you are worth recognizing for your excellence whether it's yeah. a, yeah. a non-fiction writer so i think that in itself is a great validation and then hopefully you'll do things with us uh, for the rsl you know we'll, we'll involve you in programs and doing things and hopefully uh, you'll, you'll you'll want to you know ride on that wave of um, celebration by going out there to you know tell other people that literature is great it's what it's life enhancing have a go yeah Simple stuff like that, isn't it? Go and listen to writers. And as we've seen over lockdown, how important writing and listening to authors and reading books has been. Yes, yeah, so I mean, it's one of the things that's come across at some of the interviews that we've done here is uh, when we've talked about process, uh, which we won't have time to talk about now, which is a shame. But anyway, uh, don't get it right, get it writ. Uh, and of course, one of the glories of a book is you can be anywhere, can't you? So I also quite like the fact, I will just mention, because when you become a fellow, you have to sign a book, don't you? And don't you get a choice if you either choose, is it Dickens' pen or Byron's pen or something fantastic like that? Wasn't that is that right? Yeah, we've got we've got a few more pens now. Dickens has been retired, his quill, because it splodges, I'm afraid, and it's um, <laughs> it's got a bit moth-eaten. 
Um, but we have, yeah, we have Byron's pen, um, a, a lady's pen, I believe one of his various lady friends might have given that to him. Um, we have T.S. Eliot's fountain pen, or well, the pen from uh, George Eliot's pen was the first um, uh, woman's pen we, we, we acquired. Um, and we have recently got um, Andrea Levy's pen, and Andrea Levy was a fellow, sadly died a little while ago, um, great writer, and Jean Reese's pen. Um, unfortunately, we haven't actually seen these pens in action yet because of lockdown. So yeah. <laughs> we've we've um we've asked fellows which pens they would like to use and so on, and they're there waiting. Oh, so yes, if you're watching on video now, <laughs> I've just got a. This is my quill. That actually, it's three ninety nine from the Royal Shakespeare <laughs> Theatre <laughs> souvenir shop. But it's all right, you know, it looks, it, it's got a ballpoint in the end. That's a brilliant. I mean, I love that. I love that notion of of being able to choose which pen you sign with. How fantastic! Well, um, we've run out of time again. But let's just, uh, before we finish, if anyone wants to know any more about the Royal Society of Literature, where should, where should we go? Um, so our website is r rsliterature.org. Um, rsliterature.org. you can find us on Twitter at rsliterature and on Insta, Royal Society of Literature, and Facebook and LinkedIn. <laughs> Brilliant. And YouTube. The, and YouTube. The, and YouTube, of course. And SoundCloud. But anyway, and, uh, and SoundCloud. on. Just yeah, Google. No, Google. Well, <laughs> you've, you've covered all. Yes, because it's the easiest one. Just, just put the search engine, search in for yeah. Royal Society of Literature. Oh, oh that it. thank you so much for your time, both yeah. of you. Thanks very much for coming on. Um, and uh, I'm sure we'll have to talk again. And there's all sorts of events happening as well, which yes. sounds really exciting. So brilliant. Thanks very much for your time. And that's it. We've run out of time yet again. Thank you for your company. Uh, I'll see you next week. My name's Nick Hennigan. This is literary london on resonance 104.4 fm <laughs>